Well, thank you, Ben. Um, enough is enough. Sequestration is stupid. Shutting down the government is stupidity on steroids. And today we're talking about federal workers, but it's not just federal workers. You work at a restaurant in D.C. and somebody cancels, that money's not coming back. You own a motel on Skyline Drive and somebody cancels this weekend, that money's not coming back. You look at saying, well, this is just affecting the federal government, this is affecting our national security. The intelligence community, there were people from the intelligence community who wanted to be here today, but legally, legally couldn't. Seventy percent of our civilian intelligence workers are furloughed. That is putting our country and our troops at risk. NASA Langley, one of the great scientific centers in our country, down in Hampton Roads, 3,500 people work there. There are seven working today. NSF, and I'm going to bring up Carter Kimsey in a moment, in Arlington. 1,700 federal workers, less than 30 working there now. The rest of the world isn't stopping their science, their innovation, because a narrow group in the House decided to shut down the federal government. The rest of the world hasn't been put on hold because an ideological group in the House won't allow the Speaker to bring a bill up to open the government. Let the House vote. We can have our disagreements, but no modern enterprise, government or otherwise, allows it to be shut down to basically say, we're going to put this economy on the skids because they don't get their way. Carter Kimsey is a postdoc fellow, worked at NSF since 1978. She's been, along with Amy and others, one of our great scientists. The damage we are doing right now, but the long term, who is going to be the next Carter Kimsey who's going to dedicate, or Amy, or any of these work, dedicate their life to public service if we continually treat our, dis our federal workers with this level of disrespect? Carter Kimsey. Good morning. I was asked to um, tell you how this furlough has affected me. Well, it's, I've been furloughed. I've been laid off. I've been locked down, locked out. It all feels like pretty horrible. To live in this great country and to be treated this way is very discouraging. Uh, when you've put your heart and soul into it for almost 40 years. I worked for the government for 40 years in January. I guess I'll have to deduct these this time and, and move my anniversary date. I'm proud to be a federal worker. I'm proud of the work that I do. I'm proud of my coworkers. I'm proud of my bosses. Um, and it just seems to me that there are a, a couple of levels that this affects me. I was going to buy a car last weekend. I didn't buy a car. Now, I can live without a, a new car. I feel sorry for the salesman. He was pretty disappointed when I said, sorry, I've just been furloughed. But I have colleagues who will have trouble paying their medical bills or who will have trouble supporting their families like you've heard here. We don't deserve this. Like Senator Warner said, our competitors are global competitors. My agency funds the basic research that leads to innovation and economic growth and security for this country and for our national security. My agency has an incredibly important job to do. It has bipartisan support. It has since 1951 when it was founded. But why should we all be caught up in this? Why can't we keep our commitments? Scientific research requires long-term commitments. You don't tackle nanotechnology in a 12-month period and then turn it off and then at some future time turn it back on again. The damage that's being done to our research enterprise is unseen and it can't be calculated. We've heard all the numbers of people who in the different districts are out of work and, and each one of those is an important number. But there are some things that you can't even put a number on. So any loss in innovation 
worldwide. Well, we might know it, might not know it for 10 or 15 years, and we may never recover it. So we need to go back to work. We have proposals sitting on our desks. We're trying to organize our research panels. We're trying to move forward and make sure the scientists get funded. We can't do it. I can't do it from here. I can't do it sitting home. I mean, all I can do at home right now is rewind my CDs, right? So I, we need to get back to work. We need to get back to work soon. And there's another part of this that personally bothers me a lot. I'm a program officer in a program called Ethics, Education, and Science and Engineering. We make our young scientists take courses in responsible conduct of research, in honesty, in ethics, and we try to model that behavior to them. By when we make commitments, we try to keep those commitments. That's what ethics is about. And here I am making promises to young people that I'm going to fund them. Some of them are stranded in Europe without paychecks. Some of them are stranded around this country without paychecks. They won't pay their rent. They won't eat. And worse than that, they're going to think the federal government can't be trusted. But we can be trusted. We are honest people, and we want to be honest in all of our dealings. So send us back to work. Mr. Bonner, who, whoever's holding it up, please, could we get this going? We need to go back to work. 30 people cannot do the work of the National Science Foundation. That means that work is not getting done. That's going to hurt you, and that's going to hurt your children.